Welcome to the First 40 Sports Show with the Goon Squad. It's Black Thor, Ice Water, and Puma. And before we go into any sports, we got to recognize for the second year in a row, Black Thor is the 22-23 March Madness champion. I know the March Madness is not done yet, but uh, we'll put up the uh, winning points. We both picked Texas. Texas is out of there, so we don't have a dog in the race, and I don't think we're going to have any more points scored. Um, at this particular time, but we'll see. We're going to give the floor to uh, Brother Black Thor to do his uh, victory lap and speech. You got the floor, sir. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I, you know, we both all knew, I was just saying, we all knew going into this March Madness. It was going to be crazy, man. It was. It was crazy to like the fifth power. And if you've been looking at the Final Four, there's some teams that probably none of us thought would be there. And um, it's been that type of madness, man. I, I got to give, you know, a thanks to March Madness because every year, for the most part, it seems to deliver. It seems to deliver. Um, I want to say this, too, because throughout the season, all I hear is, you know, like, who you picking? Kansas back? Oh, who you picking? I know for what? For the past two years, I've been the champion. So I must be picking something correct. So I'm just going to leave it at that. You know, I know you gentlemen basically may not love it or you not like it, but take your spanking like a man. That's all I can tell you. Take, <laughs> take your spanking like a man. I wish Pops was up there. He didn't get a little bit of this. <laughs> okay. The uh, the order uh, or the uh, standings is uh, Black had 48 points, and uh, he's in first place. I'm in second place with 40 points. And uh, Pop and Ice are in third place with uh, 36 points. And Ice, any words for, for the champion? Uh, this you just look it off to the side. Like, I can't believe this is happening. Oh, nah. <laughs> we'll, we'll do that. We're gonna, when you, see, that's the thing. It's like NFL football. When you're a champion, you don't start looking crazy. You've been there. You've been there. So congratulations. You know, like he says, we grown men here. I don't know what he's talking about. You know, people not uh, coming at it and taking your loss like a grown man. He must that must have been another show he worked on. We all grown <laughs> men. Here. I don't know every when he, he say that, I'll be like, who the hell are you talking to? We take it, we take it like grown men here. That's what we do. We win like grown men and we lose like grown men. At least I do. I don't know. I maybe that's another show he's been doing uh, on black men talk or something. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> when he's doing that bracket challenge on there, but on here, we keep it 100 always. That's how we do. But congratulations again. Uh, I mean, that's all you can say. He won. This time, I mean, it's what it was. Uh, I tell, told somebody this, and this, no, I mean, it is what it is. He he has a, a way of early on, Black Thor does well in the opening rounds. That's what he's done lately. And particularly, the, he done well in the opening rounds. Me, my strategy is, I just need to get to the four. I get to the four, that's when I get all my points. All of the stuff is, is so crazy and convoluted. I usually do my damage in the end. And sometimes I usually go with chalk, and chalk didn't work this time. It really didn't work this time. I was telling somebody, I've been doing this a long time. I've been, you know, doing a lot of brackets, won a lot of brackets, lost some. But never can I remember, ever, and I've been doing this a long time, have I ever seen that no, the people I've been playing with or anybody, nobody got one team in the Final Four right. None. None. I mean, you think about it. I mean, you win, you win, but none of us had a Final Four team representative. None. That's crazy as hell to me. But it is what it is. You win, you you know, he won fair and square. But I'm sitting there going like, and when I and when I watch Alabama and Houston lose on the same night, yeah. I said, this is some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what? On the same night. On the same night, yeah. Sitting there going like, and then I, as I watched them play, um, I saw their opponents, the shots just kept going in. It was like they were both on fire and, and just watching that too. But I guess the one thing that probably hurt the most out of watching the tournament, what just because it's about losing, I, I mean, it is what it is. You win, you lose, is the shot that Gonzaga hit to beat UCLA. Oh, my God. The second time a deep lad three-pointer right over the half-court mark beats them my heart felt for Nick Mick Cronin. You know, he's not one of my favorite people. But my heart broke. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Because the guy took the shot, and he shot it like he was going to hit it, and he did. But, I mean, overall, it's been very competitive. It really has been. Uh, again, congratulations to Black Thor. And with all that being said, I just want Florida Atlantic to win it. That really shows you is a damn, damn uh, uh, a messed up situation. <laughs> Florida Atlantic win it, and I don't care who you are. Unless you went to that school, your dad went to that school, or you giving money. 
Ain't no way in hell you said Florida Atlantic was going to the damn final four. Kudos to them. Yeah, I think they won over over thirty games this season. They did, but I don't. Yeah. Man, come on, I didn't. I That's didn't, great. I didn't see this coming, yeah. But I, you, I, you know, ain't nobody, nobody, unless you went to the school, your dad works there, somebody like that too, or or you or something that anybody goes. And they're a great team. When you watch them play, you go, they're a really good team. But those things just don't happen. And I should have known it was trouble. We just saw Purdue lost. Not saying they were the great team at all, but when the first number one lost, I was like, whoa, it's gonna be a long turn. Yeah, this was a microcosm black of, of all year where a number one team would be up one week and then they'll go down the next week. Uh Houston, Alabama. I don't know if Texas was number one. I can't remember their number one, but Purdue, Houston, and Alabama were all number ones in various times of the season, and they all dropped. Um, like I said last week, I just didn't trust Alabama and Houston. I wanted to pick Houston to win it all, but they had a hurt player. Alabama had a hurt player. Purdue, I just didn't trust. And I, I didn't know of, of, of the, the um, Kansas. I didn't know whether or not they would be the Kansas team of last year or that they would play up to their capabilities to get to the, the Final Four. You know, it's interesting because a couple of teams that are there, they gave us flashes during the season. And then they gave us reason not to believe them. Utah has won Miami, you know, throughout the season. They kind of showed you some things and it kind of went away. Um, Creighton, look at Creighton, man. I mean, look at Creighton. Basically, to me, Creighton is like a tribute to the um to the Big East because basically they played in the Big East. And we you know I know Marquette kind of ran away with it, but the Big East, man, was like, you know, a dog fight. And I think that's what happens sometimes. We start to look at some of these teams in the top 10. We kind of fall in love with them. There's some familiar names. And we don't pay attention sometimes to some other teams that are playing other, um, other uh, maybe other leagues, and we kind of overlooked them, like Florida International. They won 30 games, but who was talking about them? Nobody was talking about them. I kind of feel like they're playing in inferior talent, and then maybe at the end of the day, they're not, man. But um, Miami, I'm going to give that head coach, man, a lot of props. I'm, I'm going you know, to give UConn props, too, but Miami. I mean, I was watching that game the other night when they said this coach doesn't even call timeouts. Yeah, He has that much trust and faith in his players, but they're going to figure out what's going on so he doesn't have to talk to them. They write the ship. Bro, I've, I've never seen a college head coach, damn near an NBA head coach, maybe one other NBA coach I could think of might be Popovich that has that mentality where the players are basically coaching themselves. Even when they, towards the end of the game, you see these guys basically hugging each other and they're shooting foul shots. Where do you see that at, bro? Where, where do we ever see that in any type of sports? mm mm and these cats are playing, man. Even the teams that lost, Kansas State, Kansas, you got to be kidding me. I, I hate to see them lose. I mean, that was such a good game. I hate to see them go down. These young young men were playing, man. They were playing. I kind of picked Gonzaga to kind of get to the Final Four. But um, Gonzaga basically started after that UCLA game. They didn't even show up for UConn, in my opinion. I know UConn is pretty good. They didn't show up. But no, good, good season, good tournament. I mean, the Final Four should be something special, man. Should be something special. And I don't know who he was talking to, Ice, but I'm not – I'm happy to hear, it, man. You take time out and say, "Yeah, Black does this." Don't try to figure out my strategy, bro. Beat me. Don't try to figure out my strategy, man. Beat me. Don't be worried about what I do. I picked you, this. You know what? You know what? Two years in the row, and I now you act like you. Past years. Don't worry about the strategy. I've been you know what? the last two years. Come up with your own strategy to beat that. That's what you need to do. Don't Why worry about it, brother. Like, you, big you, ups. you act like you got a five-year dynasty on some shit. Oh, oh, like that. Two years. I got two, two years. And you know what? And I'm not gonna be. I'm with bigger man. We are. You already know what it is, though. You are. So I'm gonna leave it right there. I ain't gonna say nothing else. But you already know what it is. So again, the man that I am. Congratulations. But you know what it is, and I'm gonna leave that right there. Those that know know. Those that know know. That's all I'm gonna say. Leave what is right Pop there. saying right about now, Pooh? What's is Pop uh, having? I'll, 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 I'll send him the show, and then I'll get his comments after that. But uh, yeah, I hadn't talked to him today, but uh, I'll talk to him pretty soon. <laughs> Uh, one of the one of the teams I know, me and Black, we talked before the tournament. I said one of my dark horse te teams was Miami, and they put out a video talking about don't pick us. You know, you, you you didn't pick us all year. And what impressed me about them is when they played Texas, um, the speed that Miami had, the defense, and then when they played Houston, they just the speed and they just spread Houston um, out because Houston, I know we talked about during the season has that kind of type of amoeba defense where they kind of keep things tight, but Miami wouldn't allow them to do that and just kind of ran them off, off the field and um, off the court, uh, excuse me. 
And then uh, you saw Sasser there, you knew he couldn't go full strength. So they weren't, they, they didn't have any mercy on speeding up the game, making them work. And um, just like with Alabama, with Hill, they were trying to just stretch him out, get him to, to do more than he was supposed to do or more than he was capable of doing. And that's how they were able um, to upset um, Alabama. And that's how the team that beat um, Houston was able to upset them, um, taking advantage of uh, some of the uh, weak weak spots of, of their opponent and just taking over the game. Ice? Yeah, I, I'm going to say this. I mean, one of the things I saw this year was normally when we when you think about a lot of the tournaments, uh, the bigger teams or the bigger programs usually have better athletes or better talent, and they found ways to just kind of put the smaller teams at bay. But this year, the way that even though the tournament seems wacky for a lot of people, the teams that are in the Final Four right now, their chemistry took them a long way. You look at Miami, you see how small they were. They weren't the biggest team in the world. And we've been talking about Miami off and on for a while. But we always knew when they got up against a bigger school with more talent, they were going to falter. Not this year. They play great chemistry. They hit shots. That's the key. Key moments, they got their guys hit shots. And I'm like, oh, wow. And you saw that with the guards. And then you look over at San Diego State. All the way through, San Diego State, they just refused to quit. They played their game, played strong, win the game. Florida Atlantic the same way. They came away too. And, and most impressively is UConn. I mean, you guys mentioned a little bit about UConn early on. But UConn is, UConn is one of those old school, old school uh, Big East type basketball teams. When they come in, they can beat you. They got a one shooter. They got a big center. They come in. If they, if they When they're on and they run up and down, they play good defense. They're great to watch, but they can win ugly. They, they are a major problem, and that's why they did what they did to Gonzaga. But the whole point of that being is when you look at these teams, you got four teams, you might go, uh, but you don't go, oh, that's that one dude, that one superstar or anything like that. Chemistry. That's one thing I know. Chemistry. They play hard, they play good defense, and they're willing to put it on the line. And that chemistry, they used it well, along with their coaches, because the coach at Miami has been coaching for a long time. He's been trying to get here, and he just never was able to. But when you get that special group of guys that play real hard, they're in tune, as you guys mentioned about camaraderie and whatnot, the chemistry, you can beat a lot of teams that are more talented to you particularly this year. So kudos to them. It was fun watching that for a change because before it's usually the other way around where you get a team that's just really talented and they just run through it or they get close enough. But when all of these four teams, one thing you notice is chemistry, 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 allowed them to move forward. And it was great to watch. Like, so when I, when I, think, I think one thing that we need to, should be stressed, um, real quickly, Miami, when you think about them winning that game against um, – Texas, they didn't they shoot any threes, bro. They didn't make any threes. It was all, when the last time a team basically beat somebody, but I'll make it a three. They weren't relying on hitting three points. But I think what really helped with a lot of this chemistry, the transfer portal, bro. A lot of these teams basically, if you look at these players, look at Texas, a lot of the guys were transferred from other places, might have played somewhere last year, they're here. And I know people at first, people were like, the transfer portal is hurting games. It's not, bro. It's making a lot of these schools more competitive. So you don't have it's starting to balance things out a lot, and I like that. I think that's what we see in the chemistry where you go somewhere where you feel more comfortable playing, where you get aligned with forget who might have recruited you. If it's not working there, guess what? You got another year or two eligibility, go somewhere else. And I think we're starting to see that pay off, at least in college basketball. Black, I'm going to stay with you with the the women's side of the tournament. Uh, South Carolina is still cruising. They had a little scare with uh, Maryland a little bit in the second quarter and in the third quarter, and then they just uh, coasted in the fourth quarter. Um, what is your take on, um, you know, the women's game? Will South Carolina have any problems in their tournament? I think that game will South Carolina up. I really do. Man. I, I mean, I'm interested to see how they play at this point, but I think that um... – Remember Chuck Daly said sometimes years ago, he would say that um, in order to beat a team, you got to basically take them off, take the head off the snake. And yet they had a chance at that point, take the head off South Carolina. And they basically grabbed it by the neck. But they just didn't get the head off. And I think for that, they, next time they play or anytime after, they're going to play well. For me, man, when I saw UConn lose to Ohio State, that was it right there, bro. I mean, I know we have some more games to be played in women's college basketball, but 
the way they came out and took it to UConn and that guard, that freshman guard for Ohio State, I know they lost the following game. It says to me, again, I mean, basketball, there's not one team now, other than South Carolina, maybe in, ma- I mean, in women's sport, that is basically dominating. You have such a balance where you have these younger players wants to go to schools of their choice that are saying, you know what, I'm going to go to this powerhouse. Then they're going elsewhere. It makes for good play, man. It makes for very good play. But in South Carolina, I think they woke up. I'm a little afraid for the teams they might play in the next two games they might play, man, because I think Dawn is going to be have them basically not sleeping that well at night. They're going to play a little better. Yeah, I, I know that uh, people are talking about Iowa uh, having a chance. Ice, what do you think on the women's uh, tournament? I tell you what, and I watched Ohio State, of course, you know, alumnus, proud alumnus of the Ohio State University, and I kind of, I didn't know if they could go though this far. Um, I, I love their defense. When they put that press on, that reminded me of 80s basketball, bro. You put it on and you just do not stop. It's just when they needed to make a difference, and I think he caught Gino by surprise because Gino used to having the girls are so in tune that they just rise above everything, right? It don't matter. You can't stop them because they're so talented. And the way that you saw his frustration, I was like, yeah, bro, it's catching up with you, bro, catching up with you. Because you can see in his face, like, God! Yeah. And I was like, nah, Gino, go on, sit down, bro. Ain't your time. Ain't your time. But regardless of the fact, uh, you see a team like Virginia Tech, particularly with their coach, African-American coach, in the Final Four, really had those girls rolling and playing well. Um, but it's always Don Staley, man, especially lately. She has a way to turn the switch for these young ladies. And they play like D-A-W-G, true dogs. They, they are so laser-focused on defense – they are they're very dangerous and they they believe in themselves and they should because they're that daggone talented. I'm looking forward to this game with Iowa. I've seen Iowa. I've seen Iowa versus Ohio State a couple of times. I've seen Iowa against Maryland. Iowa, I think it's Caitlin, the girl, she can shoot. She can shoot the rock and she can drop, you know, she shoots deep. She can drop by 30, you know, just with blinking her eyes. But I don't, as much as I like Iowa and the way she shoots and when they play hard. I don't think they've seen anything like South Carolina. <laughs> if she get that off, if she get 35 off against South Carolina, now you need to take her directly yeah, to the awesome. WNBA. Yeah. But I'm telling you, Don Staley is going to go, oh, she thinks she can just do whatever and you're going to dominate our girls. They're going to have, they're going to be right here. She, gonna, she might as well just get ready to have a tag on herself because Don Staley's teams are going to be on her. And she can get that off against South Carolina ain't more power to you. I don't know. You know, you know, they South Carolina when they play UConn, whoever it is, when they want to play, they're gonna be up to the challenge. I'm looking forward to the other game of uh, LSU Virginia Tech. Just kind of see that goes. But overall, Don Staley is just they play the way that she used to play. You know, they the way they they are intense. They will face anybody and they will turn up the heat. And everybody's talking about the uh player uh from Iowa and I watched her she can shoot she's deep she's, she's very talented but like they say you you will know you in the ring with a with a real one and we're gonna see what you're gonna it doesn't mean she's not gonna be an awesome WNBA player she might be but you gonna find out coming up because you definitely she definitely gonna be in the ring with a real one with some real ones because man they are just they're just nasty they are nasty they got the the big ladies in the middle they got the guards, and they are intense. Yeah, intense. yeah. You you saw the real South Carolina team in the second half of that game, and you you had to know that uh, Coach Staley was was in them and saying, "Listen, we got to get this done. Uh, there's no letdown here." Um, before we get out of here, predictions on the Final Four this Saturday, Black. I'm gonna disclose my eyes and take Miami, bro. From what I see from them, I know UConn looks good. Um, it's hard for me to go against them. What I've seen, they, how they play on Sunday, how they took Texas down. I'm not saying Texas was that much of a powerhouse, but there's something about this team, man. It's like they had, they weren't even scared. When they were down at halftime, you could just tell they they weren't looking back. They weren't second-guessing. And the players that didn't play well in the first half took it to a new level in the second half. And again, they don't rely on the three-pointers. They get inside, they mix it up. They're not afraid to go in and get dirty. They're not afraid to fall around, go to, you know, 
get in there and kind of muscle it around. I don't think that uh, there's going to be other other threes going to handle that. Or the two teams, so I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Miami, man. I'm gonna close my eyes and say Miami. At, when it's all said and done, they're gonna be cutting the ropes down. Yeah, ice prediction. Yeah, uh, that I wonder. I'm looking forward to San Diego State, Florida, Atlantic game. Uh, that's gonna I think will be a toss up. Uh, I really thought about this for a while. I love my, I love their heart. I love they just, they got the little guards. They come in, they go, we ain't supposed to be here. You know, we they they remind me of just the raggedy dude that you just go, no, but there's no, no chance of him. They just raggedy. They shouldn't even be in the same room with these individuals, right? You you wouldn't normally think that, but they have earned every uh, bit of, uh, of, of of wins and what they've done. But I got to keep it 100. You kind, bro. You kind. And I tell you why. Because with the way you kind, like I said, they can win. They can run you up out. They can score 90 points or they can play dirty and they can play low, down low, strong strength, half court basketball. And most importantly, they play D and they have size. If Miami is hitting their shots, I think they can easily win this game. But when it gets nasty, and and I think you saw that the way that you know you say well you uh, Gonzaga wasn't that good or whatever, but the way that UConn dismantled Gonzaga with that size and they made Timmy look like uh, you might get a few points, bro, but you can't check nobody. They have a, a, a an attitude, especially with uh, when I watched them, and I saw uh, Coach Hurley over there. I was like, damn, this St. Anthony back in Jersey. <laughs> I thought about you know what that. Too. I was yeah. like, damn, is the dad coaching? Because the way they play, they just they just have an attitude. And I love it because you got a shooter. You even had the what's the little guard? The little guard, he bounced around. I was like, he dancing too. They just got a swag about them. And I think what that's going to get them over. They play decent and they can hang enough. Uh I think their size. And the way that they play is going to be a problem for Miami. Unless Miami score shoot like 68% from the field, I think that's going to cause a problem. And that's, I think that's going to let UConn uh, reign as champion. Yeah, I, the arena they're playing in is so big. It's, it's, it's like they're playing outside. So um, you two made a great point about three-point shooting. Um, that may be a little off because of the, you know, you're looking at, you know, a crowd and it's almost like it's outside. It may, the depth perception may have an effect on shooting. So um, when you have San Diego State who they rely on their defense and turn you over and try to score um, really kind of a high percentage shots along with Miami, um, you wonder about the teams that shoot the best three point uh, percentage, whether or not they're going to be affected in this big arena in Houston. So uh, with that being said, I, I picked both of these as a dark horse, but uh, my dark horse to win it all, I, I, I said Miami had a chance. I've been looking at San Diego State all year, watching uh, games on the West Coast and uh, know they were a strong team. Never imagine. I knew they would knock off um, one of the big teams or higher seed teams, but I never imagined that they would have a chance to be in the Final Four and to um, possibly win the, the national championship. But I got to go with Miami, and I, I got to go with the commercial that said, don't pick us. Don't pick, but I'm picking you, bro. I'm picking you because uh, coming out the ACC, reading an article about them saying, hey, the ACC basically prepared us for every team that we faced um, in this tournament. And so we feel prepared. We feel like we're ready to go and that we can do this. Um, this was a team that everybody really forgot about last year. They made it to the Elite Eight. And so I think with their experience, um, I think they may have a nod in winning it all, but we'll see. It's always, this tournament is probably one of the best tournaments that I've seen as far as parity um, that I've seen in a long time. And I have no complaints with the committee and who they selected, how they paired it up. We said it before when they paired it up, it's like, man, it's going to be some blockbuster games. Kansas State, the one thing I wanted to say is no well you should have took that last shot bruh you should have took that last i was waiting for you to take that last shot but uh you can see after he passed the ball and the guy didn't know what to do with it, he just put his hands on his head and was like man i know his his people are like dude it was on you to, to pull it through but anyway let's go to the association the nba and ice give me your eye test on the nba sir i don't know maybe it's just me but 
and and I'm not their biggest fan, but every week, like Milwaukee, just get better and better. <laughs> <laughs> like what the hell? What, what y'all doing? They just get better and better. Uh, uh, the Greek freak looking like an all around basketball player now. I was like, wait a minute, he don't look like he was before. Just relying on the certain moves, and I think literally because he has uh, great talent around him, and they're un again, they are unselfish. So therefore, they look good at that standpoint. Uh, Boston is holding steady at two. Philadelphia three. Uh, Cleveland Cavaliers doing their thing. Your beloved Knicks are at five in the East. That should be interesting. Um, Miami's at seven. I went to Toronto. They still might make it there at nine, but they're not playing great basketball. I think you might end up seeing a move as far as coaching is concerned up there at Toronto because they either they're going to do that or they're going to make a trade or they're going to make a move and get rid of uh, – I don't believe it. They might get rid of Siakam because they want Barnes to be their the, the main guy. And I think they're having trouble trying to figure out how they can coexist. But uh, uh, I want to give uh, a quick shout out. And we talked about this too. And no, I just say, I'll say that for my, uh, for my, for my, for my party shot. Uh, but in the West, Denver, Memphis is showing a little bit more uh, positivity. Now the job's back. Want to see how that's going to work out for them. Uh, Clippers still hanging around. Phoenix, again, Mike Brown in Sacramento, number three, a lovely. Um, Lakers at nine. OKC, Dallas has dropped to 11. OKC, come on. I need you at 10 just to make it in. Because if they make the playoff, even the playoff playing game, and they keep things together, OKC, in my opinion, has a lot to build up on. They don't make any changes. You got Gilders, uh, you know, Alexander there. Uh, was it the, the guard as well? And you also had a big fella coming in next year. That's a young team that I think could do a, a, a lot of growing and could make some noise as long as they don't mess it up. Getting the offseason, trying to get too many veterans and trying to do too much. It's kind of like what I was, and I get up this, it's kind of like what I was telling we back in the day, you know, people in Ohio that love the Cavaliers used to always get mad when the Bulls were, you know, defeating the uh, the Cavaliers and they playing real tough. And then they thought, we got to do something real quick. So they made trades, got rid of Ron Harper, did some other things. And I said to my to, to the people, I said, well, why y'all so mad? The Bulls beating everybody, everybody. Not just you. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm they beat everybody. So why don't you just make a few look, you know, look, look, uh, little changes instead of going crazy. And they went crazy. And like I said, to this day, Y'all going to be mad at me in Cleveland. I'm going to get off of this. Y'all love Mark Price. And Mark Price was a hell of a player. He was, you know, sung in the choir. Everybody liked him. But I said from day one, imagine if you was in Cleveland and you had the backcourt of Ron Harper and Kevin Johnson. I'm going to leave that right there. Look that up. I'm going to leave that right there. Yeah. Uh, Black, I see Chicago trying to get into the play-in. Uh, I'm looking at, at uh, the West, and I'm thinking OKC and Dallas are going to make a run. And and put the LA Lakers right at number twelve or or number eleven, <laughs> and they'll be out to play in. But your eye test, man. Yeah, I don't think Dallas has it, man. I really don't. I think you know, and I hate to kind of say this, but I think that some of the moves the Lakers made, not that they're great, I think they made them a better team broadly, and I think they got a shot to kind of get in. Dallas is no way at this point right now. It should be number eleven. There's no way, man. It's just that I, you know. Hate to kind of use this terminology, but I think Irvin is a cloud, bro. I call him a black cloud. Cloud, but I think he's a cloud. Remember that kid in the Charlie Brown who every time he walked, he had dust behind him and dirt. I think that's Kyrie Irving. I think wherever he goes, man, after a while, he stinks it up. He's just kind of he kind of sets in, and the team just kind of starts to kind of fall apart because they were playing very well prior to him. And look at them now. And and then he had a nerve to basically address the fans, bro. You ain't been in Dallas enough to long talk to the fans, bro. You ain't been there long enough. Let them boo, say what they want to say, but you ain't been there long. We've been there, what, a week or two? I mean, realistically, <laughs> you haven't earned the creative to say anything to the fans, and that's Urban's problem. Bro, just play the game. Go out there and play the game. Stop getting these little short injuries where you can't play. Um, I think, to me, Milwaukee, to me, to me, reminds me of the old San Antonio, bro. No matter who you put out there, they're ready to go. They know their role. They just play. And they blossom, and the Greek freak is priming up, man. It's gonna be, it's gonna be tough to take them out, really take them out. But um, yeah, I know I spoke of Toronto, and I read a story to where um, 
the old coach for the Celtics. I shouldn't say old. Oh, it's only been about a year. Aduma, I think that's his name. Toronto is looking hiring to bring him in next year. They're going to let the coach go. That coach, actually, they want him in Houston. I'm not sure why, but they want the coach in Toronto and Houston. And words are that Aduma is going to be in, in Toronto next year. He's going to be the head coach there. So we keep an eye out for that. And I kind of believe if that happens, you know, he's going to bring the guy I can coach. He can definitely coach. At this point right now, you got Pop out there selling the fact that, yeah, he made a mistake, but he's a good man, giving an op opportunity. So he's going to be back on the floor on, his, on the court somewhere next season. It might be Toronto. Yeah, but when I look at um, his team outside getting in, I agree with OKC if they can make it in. But when they get that, you know, the tall brother back or the tall cat back next year, they're going to be a better team. But the Dallas Mavericks, no, I just I just don't see it, man. I don't think that team is I, – I think we, even when we speak of chemistry, we saw in college – the chemistry is just lacking, bro. I think Luca now doesn't know. He doesn't want to kind of step in the way of Irving. Other players are trying to kind of feel their way around, and um, it's not there for, for the Mavs. I think teams have like six or seven to eight games left in the season, so uh, we will see. Um, it's getting real tight, and the races are getting real tight. Uh, I really don't like the play-in format, but we have it, so we got to deal with it. But um, whoever wins in the play-in, then, you know, not going to do much anyway. But here's the story I want to get to in the NFL, man. I know everybody's talking about players and, and Lamar and all this other stuff. But um, I'm interested in the uh, commander's investigation and Roger Goodell Black saying, hey, uh, we're going to release all the information on this, regardless whether he sells the team or not. What are your thoughts about this uh, with Roger Goodell saying, hey, we're going to release all this information um, on Dan Snyder? And um, Roger just got an extension, I think, last week. So uh, he's coming in with a uh, bow barrel blazing, uh, <laughs> willing his leadership uh, in the NFL. Well, that kind of makes sense then. Because when I really heard this story, I was like, who cares at this point? Other than you're trying to embarrass him to, you know, to turn the team over even more. At this point, who really cares to me? Focus on some things that could really, that you should be focusing on. Again, hiring black coaches, black general managers. Stuff of that nature. My, my, my point is this, man. If you didn't really dig in with Kraft and some of these idiots that was going around, you had to, you, had to, you know, we all know what was, some of the things are going on Washington. So release it all. It sounds great. I mean, of course, we'll pay attention to it. But at this point, who cares? But then again, if he got that new deal, he knows he's solidified. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to come out, like you said. He's going to make a stand. I ain't mad at him. But for me, it's, it's like, I, come on, man. I mean, realistically, we – there's been stuff sneaking out of Washington for a long period of time that we've heard stuff that's going on. So yeah, you put it all out there and we'll pay attention to it, but I don't think it's gonna really move the needle. Ice, you have the Magic Johnson group that's uh, prime and ready uh, to put down about $6 billion for the Washington Commanders. You have Roger Goodell coming out with this information that he's going to release um, uh, all the information about the investigation on uh, Dan Snyder. What are your thoughts about this? Yeah, um, I think I wouldn't say it's fool's goal because I think I think he does have the information, but I think he's trying to make sure that Daniel Snyder doesn't try to do a, a renege on trying to make it longer than it needs to be. Because I think what Darius is saying that uh, you have two groups that have verified uh, six billion dollars in in cash, and you know, in, in cash, they're ready to buy right now. So I think Goodell is playing the game like. Snyder, man, just walk away, right? Don't don't push any further. We want to have this done by the draft. Right. Look, we want to get this out of the way so people can move on. You can move on, whatever. And I think he's kind of putting that, you know, that that carrot out there, that caveat as a way to kind of say, you got to get the hell out of here now. So like Black Thor said, it's kind of like baseball and steroids. You come back to some shit that happened 15, 20 years ago, and then we got to pay for it. And why you take it through Congress? Don't nobody give a damn about that. Shit. You don't do it when it's right. How come you didn't do that uh, when I was trying to do that about 15 years ago when it was hot? Now it's like you selling the team, and you know Daniel Snyder did this. He did this. He really didn't like people of color. He came out here. He had a Ku Klux Klan hat on or whatever. Nobody gives a damn, bro. Let him move on. You know how y'all say protect the shield. You already got it out there. You can if he delays anymore, you can show him the records. And make him get the hell out. But clean the slate. Let folks get back to what they need to do in Washington. Let Magic Johnson, whoever you're gonna do, 
since y'all don't use the Rooney Rule, use it for that. Let Magic Johnson's group win, get the win the big hit. <laughs> and y'all go ahead and get Lamar Jackson and let's move forward with football. That's what you got to do, baby. Just get, I got it for you. I'm telling you what to do. Fans, everybody will love you. And you got Eric Bianami as, as an offensive coordinator. Bro, you can't lose. <laughs> can't lose, bro. All right, the NFL. L has another story that's out, and uh, I I knew uh, I can hear Black's voice, but I'm gonna go to Ice first on this. I can hear Black voice saying they don't care about the players; they just don't care. They don't care about player safety. And so Thursday night football, they're gonna have I guess they're flexing the schedule. Ice and uh, there's uh, more teams that probably gonna be playing on Thursday. Uh, Patrick Mahomes already said I don't agree with this. What are your thoughts on this, man? Man, okay, let me just say this. All right, I'm trying to say this. I know Black Thor said a lot of stuff about they don't care about the players. Well, we've known that. Yeah. You've known that. I'll be trying to tell y'all. African American players, y'all already know. Y'all got the power, y'all do nothing with it. That's that's that was two years ago. We're gonna stay right here. So here's the thing. Every year the NFL come up with some stuff. They change it. More games, cutting off the uh the preseason games. 8, 17, 18 weeks. Next next is going to be 20 weeks. And everybody going to complain. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I don't want to play on Thursday. I don't want to play on Wednesday. Oh, they, next, watch. They're going to try having games every damn day of the week. <laughs> That's what they're going to get to. They get to. And they're going to complain about it. But you know what they're going to do? Once they get it set and they start playing and the fans keep coming in and start buying the merchandise and everybody getting their check. And their wives still getting their nails and their toes done and going to Acapulco in the middle of uh, February. They're going to bring their hands to work like they're supposed to. Because that's what they do. It's all about the money. So this, oh, Patrick Mahomes, oh, I want to play on too many games. Man, shut the ass up. Oh, y'all. It's about the cash. I ain't mad at y'all. Get your money. But don't hear act like you being, uh, uh, what's the word I want to say? That you, that, you know, you being inconvenienced. Cause you gotta play two more games on man. Get out there and get that money. You get paid a lot of money. What difference do it make you play on Thursday, Friday, Sunday, Tuesday? Get out there, bro. The money the same. Yeah, and you guess what? And then when the Super Bowl comes, you prancing around going, ah, dude, I ain't got no, I ain't got no love for that. Guess what? They complaining now because it's the off season. But come when the season started, they say we play 18 games. You got to play five days in a row. They want to be out there because they want that coin, bro. It's all about. It's all about. End of the day, much love is all about the money. Black like Amazon is putting a lot of money to this, and so I, yeah, it's it's a lot of money that you really can't refuse. And the NFL, I've never seen the NFL turn down money from anybody, and and, and you can kind of put the money up, and the NFL is going to uh, accommodate you because they love money. I'm going to run through this real quick. I remember years ago, NFL said, we're never playing in Las Vegas. <laughs> I remember Las Vegas. That. Years ago, but NFL was like, we're not sure about football. We're not we're fancy football. We're not yeah. sure about football league. Now they own fancy, they own fancy football league. So, and like you said, it's chasing the money. And you you hit the nail on the head, man. Amazon probably basically came to the table after the season. So, you know, some of these games you guys had, you gave us, you know, some of the seasons, some, some of the Thursdays were cool, but some of them weren't. We want to have better teams play on Thursday. We're spending all this cash. We're devoted, we're devoted to you. You know, we're in. We want more better matchups on Thursdays. Aha. We can flex them. <laughs> we, we just, just like on Sundays. And sometimes I think on Sunday can flex some games they choose not to. But we can flex now where basically if a team is basically hot and two teams are, is a matchup on Sunday, we can still put on Thursday. Will that make you happy, Amazon? Absolutely. And there it is. They don't care about what Mahomes is saying. Ice is right. They don't care about the safety. They don't care about anything. That's new cash flow right there, bro. New cash flow to the point where, in my opinion, NFL is trying to get to the point where they're going to be streaming anyway. Amazon's just the first door that open up. I mean, don't be surprised at some point Netflix is showing up for football games, bro. Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. It's coming. They, they want to get to they, the highest bidder that can basically go for money. That's what they're rolling to. So at some point, CBS, Fox, NBC, it's going to lose out because they're going streaming. If the cash is there, they're going there. But, yeah, this is simple, man. I mean, I, I think it's good for us as fans, as players. I see what they're saying because, you know, now they could tell you, you might have been thinking you're playing on Sunday. You know, your body's hurting on Monday and Tuesday. 
No, nah, you're you stri- lap, strap them up and you're playing on Thursday, man, at the end of the day. But keep in mind, too, and I, I hate NFL players, man, I really do. But if you're making millions, millions, and teachers are making, what, fifty, seventy-five thousand dollars $75,000 a year, you got to shut your mouth and do it, boss. I, I, I'm with that. You got to shut your mouth to play because you make a million to play a child's game. Yes, it's, it's hard in the body and all that stuff, but guess what? There's always work at the, at the post office. Quit. Go work at the post office because you're making that type of cash. Millions, millions to toss a football, to tackle someone. At the end of the day, man, it's a short-lived thing. Make your money. The NFL is going to keep churning. It's going to keep churning, man. But if you look at them, they'll say one thing one day. And next week, <laughs> how much money do you say you got? We can make? Oh, yes, yeah, a great idea. Great investment. Here we go. So I want to ask you both about this with with these changes. Uh, the Players Association, I'll go to ICE first. Can they leverage this for more money? Man, no. no. <laughs> I mean, if we're talking another league, you got to realize the NBA, their stars kind of dictate what they do, right? People got LeBron James and the Lakers, whoever, blah, blah, blah. Good Luka and blah, blah, blah. You don't hear them go, Dak Prescott and the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. They go, the Dallas Cowboys on the Pittsburgh Steelers because the teams are like that. And the owners are the own. Again, people always bring these things up. And I always throw the same thing back at them. This is the only true league that makes their own rules. And if you don't like it, you can get the fuck out of here. That's how they roll. And they, if this some stuff been wrong, it's hell. Guess what they do? They throw a little money at it. They they chill and they they recognize it about two weeks, and everybody gets back to work because we got money to make. That's what they do. They make their own rules. They're like, well, if I was working a regular job. You couldn't do it. this. Ain't a regular job, man. These are billionaires. They make their own rules. And the more you think about that, instead of about your four hundred one k that you got to work your ass off for, and that gold watch you ain't getting no more, it's not like the same. But they make their own rules and they don't care who likes it or not. So therefore, NFL Player Association does not have leverage. And when they do get leverage, what they do, they give it right back. They make another adjustment or they make a negotiation. The only time, and this is a long time ago, that they stood up and it was what it was when Gene Upshaw said, you know what? We striking. F y'all. F y'all. Gene Upshaw was a bad man, and we knew about the scab situations and everything. We ain't had a badass dude like that since then, bro. I ain't mad at D. Maurice or Maurice or whoever, T. Tito, John, and, and Paul, whoever. But it's at the end of the day, <laughs> ain't no dogs in there, bro. Everybody playing with the group. Like, when, when the whole thing with the Buffalo dude, well, we're trying to figure out whether or not we're going to play. I'm, I, I really didn't say nothing, but I thought they should go out there and play. What? Anyway. Yeah, and like in bed with the owners. Um, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, Black, your thoughts, man. You know, he he had, he had right down the head with himself, bro. Man, that's when the union had teeth. Since then, Morris has no teeth, bro. When the last time you seen him? Well, all the stuff that's going on when the last time. To me, when they allow, I'm not saying I I I knew this already, but as a union, you allow them to blackball Kaepernick. You allowed it. You said nothing. You didn't, you didn't speak on it. Never came out and addressed it. You act like it wasn't existed. That's the point. I mean, at some point, you got to basically rally the troops. But the problem is, too, probably with the union, there's no unity. There's none. I, real quick, I mean, I worked at a job. Shortly, I came out of high school. I was at this factory. I was paying very well. And they didn't want to give us a raise. It was, con- it was going for a union contract, and they didn't want to give us a raise. Well, the union came out on a Friday. They told everyone, guess what? Monday, nobody's working. No one. Don't you show up? We're gonna send you a we're gonna send you a schedule where you come and strike for like two or three hours out the day. Monday, nobody showed up. Tuesday, guess what? We had our contract, bro. We, we had our contract. We had, and, and that's what I'm saying. When NFL, when when you're not gonna basically take money out of their pockets, NFL, the players, when you're not gonna take money, they don't. They're not gonna respect you. They know that you want like ice all the time. No, no, you don't want to pay Cobra. <laughs> they already know. They know you got this. You got that. They know. They know your weak points and they play on it. So the union, to me, the, the, the players, it doesn't even exist. Other than title, what does it do? Let's be honest. Other than when the last time you saw them have a win with the NFL, that they did anything concrete. Think about it. Seriously. Do they even exist? I mean, if I was NFL, I wouldn't pay into it, be honest with you. 
They have no bite, none. But here again, you allow things to happen. You stand to the sideline. You have like, shh. People just, players just dangle out there. Shh. Who should be champion more for black head coaches than the NFLPA? Yeah. Who should be? Think about this. They don't even talk about it. When the last time they talked about it? Nothing. <laughs> In bed with the ownership, like I said. Uh, Black Door, your first question, man. I know we talked about it a couple of times. I guess we got, I want to bring it back to it, man. But when you hear um, Lamar Jackson says, I requested a trade back on March 2nd, your, your, your thoughts, just your thoughts. I think he said March 2nd or 4th. It doesn't even matter. This March 2nd, yeah. But, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I think that uh, I I feel I hear a little frustration, right? Because <laughs> he tried everything. I think they said he had a pseudo representative trying to get some deals for him, and they got a they sent out a, a bulletin saying no team should negotiate with this dude to talk to this dude because he wasn't an official through the office. Another way that they run the game. Oh, uh, you ain't you ain't come to our office and get certification. You can't talk to no damn body on behalf of nobody. So whatever he's trying to do, I think he's frustrated. But I'll say this, and I don't think, I mean, you might sound crazy, you don't have an agent like that, but he ain't no fool. Because besides the fact that we heard that he's asked for a trade, they also said that last week they still negotiate. Because as much as Baltimore wants to say, oh, you can go out there and do what you want to do, they know they want their brother back. And they can say what they want to. You're not going to find the, the backup quarterback did a hell of a job. But if they can get Lamar Jackson for at least one more year for $35 million, they're going to do it. Because one thing he can do with all of the nine tight ends they got, and they tried to get a couple running backs, they still can win football games. And he might be mad, but if you get him to play on the field and he don't, you know, get into that injury thing where he can't play during the playoffs, if you at least get him on the field, they got a chance. They know they have a chance. But – you can say what you want to, but where are you, where else are you going to find another quarterback that can help you with them nine tight ends and win the way that you do? The other brother was a Huntley, is is a hell of a quarterback. He's going his way, trying to come up, but there is nothing like Marmar, bro. Well, Marmar want to play, so Marmar can't get onto a situation. He gets thirty five mil. Hell, Kirk Cousins can ride him for three years. They finally about to cut it That's loose after this year. You can at least give Marmar one more year because you never know what might happen. That's just me. I, I, th I think it was uh, it was kind of funny how he exposed them, exposed the uh, Baltimore Ravens because the Baltimore Ravens, I don't think anticipated him coming out with the statement, kind of uh, sharing the, the dirty laundry about what's really going on behind the scenes. And I remember, like you said last week, you know, Lamar Jackson should start speaking up more and saying more. And he got on Twitter and he's tweeting some things. Um, now my only problem with that is uh, quit talking to Meek Mill and trying to get Kraft to get you up at New <laughs> England. Don't, don't talk to no rappers to talk to ownership. But I think, um, you know, he, he kind of like, like took their pants down right in front of everybody. And especially in front of a press conference when the head coach is talking about, hey, we're looking forward to having him in. It's like, wait, wait, no, 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 no. I requested a trade. You guys are trying to put up a public relations front that, you know, you're working on it and everything is in good faith and it's not in good faith. So I was asking for a trade and maybe there is um, some marketing plan to kind of, or um, collusion to kind of keep you away from other teams. So you have no choice but to play for the Baltimore Ravens. But this guy obviously put out on March 2nd, I asked for a trade from the Ravens because I wasn't happy with everything that was being negotiated. And I think it put them on the spot. Now the Ravens, if they really want them, I think they closer you get to the draft, you got to do something. You really got to do something. And I said this a week before, this was your former MVP that you're treating this way. Who else would want to go to Baltimore if you're treating your franchise player this way? You got, you know, Aaron Rodgers, who was on shrooms, doing all this kind of stuff. I don't know what he's talking about half the time. And he's getting all kind of money. He's, he's calling the shots. He's getting car blanche. I don't know when the last time. I think he was two-time MVP. He's getting all this stuff. But Lamar Jackson can't th get this, and this is your MVP quarterback? You better do something, Ravens. Or uh, I, I wouldn't put it past he just sits out 
and and not plays. And uh, he'll be, you know, should have did it last year, like you said, in previous shows. But right now it's getting to a point where sit out and let's see when they start losing um, how the tune changes. Black? The problem there is yeah, he's he's, he's going to be forced to, but – Ironically, he's going to be he's going to be paid thirty five million dollars a year, which he should not. He should be paid more than for his skill set. He should be, but it's, I think it's going to be if he's to choose to play, it's going to be there. I think they are, you know, against him not to sign him. But Lamar, even with that statement, his tweet statement, here's what bothered me about that. Lamar's still trying to be too nice, bro. When you're talking about, I will always love the Ravens fans. You don't have to love them, but you love them for it, bro. See, you know, uh, see, I. You, you can say what you want about T.O. Remember when T.O. was in Philly cutting up, acting stupid? Guess what? Philly got a better deal than Dallas. You got to sometimes act a fool. Aaron Rodgers acts the fool, bro. Let's be honest. But he gets paid. So, Lamar, you're trying to be friendly, nice. And the mere fact that you're telling people now on March 20-something, you asked for a trip. Why didn't you say it publicly on March 2nd? You could have said that publicly. Why are you telling them why I requested? You had teeth if you'd have said it back then. Teams could have basically said to the Ravens, guess what? Before they put the tag on you, I want to give you this. Now they put the tag, nobody really kind of wants to play ball with you. Now, I'm not going to say because he's not he's not an own agent, but realistically, bro, you've been too nice. Yes, I said last year, you had them. Don't play. Don't play, bro. You had them. You had, to me, by week four, you'd have had a contract deal that you wanted. Week four, because they wanted to make the playoffs. When they lost the first game of the season, probably the second game too, guess what? Lamar, you're going to be on the field, bro. I would have been right up to the basically after preseason last game and choose not to play. But no, you want to be nice and you're at, still being nice. If you said that March 2nd, why the hell are we just hearing about it now? You got to come out, bro. You got to come out with some guns and he hasn't. So they're sitting around and being, in my opinion, they don't believe he's smart enough to mm. handle the situation. I'm just being honest. And to a degree, he's not. He's not. Because he hasn't really been in this, and he's thinking, he thinks, you know, they love me, I love them, the city love me. Guess what? Like Janice Jackson said, what have you done for me lately? And at the end of the year, I mean, I know we say he's won the MVP, he done all this stuff, but when you think about what has he done for Baltimore lately, it is what it is, man. Lamar, you got to get it straight, bro. You know, they they want something out of you, but they want it at a cheap cost. And saying you want to trade, no, I'm not playing. On this, make it clear. I'm not playing on this franchise tag. You haven't signed it yet. I will not play this franchise, whatever tag you want to put me on. Until the deal is done, I'm not putting on a Ravens football uniform. Don't play with them. Come on, say it. Don't be afraid to say it. If they want you, they'll meet, come and meet you at the table. But this, I asked for a trade. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> but what did it do? So to me, you and your mom, if your mom is with you, you all better get it right and get it and get it going, get it popping and stuff. Sometimes you got to act a fool. Look at the players that act a fool and got money. Just look at them. Look at OBJ for what it's worth. But acting a fool. But he's gotten he's gotten paid, bro. If your talent is this, stop trying to be this nice guy. Hey, but I want anybody to like me. Damn all that. Damn it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I asked you a question. Yeah, I was going to talk a little bit more about the NFL owners and the collusion around Lamar Jackson. Well, one thing is on my tongue, and I got to let it go. You see a lot of major moves in college basketball coaches. Slick Rick back in the city, baby. Are y'all excited? <laughs> Not the Knicks. Well, he's back in the city. New York, New York. I think I already know Black's answer, but go ahead, man. <laughs> it's funny the coach that they let go. He was there for five years. He felt like he was fired. He was fired. I'm like, bro, come on. They gave you five years. And we ever, have you, have you ever mentioned St. John's name on this show in the past five years? No. <laughs> so not in like, NIT. Not yes, in the NIT. Like, no. Yes, for some reason you didn't get it done. I don't know, man. I, sometimes you be careful you get in bed with. That's all I can say. St. John, be careful when you get in bed with me because <laughs> it go the wrong way. And um, Puma, you called it. Somebody in the Big East is going to give him a job. And here it is, man. But if, I'm, if I remember correctly, St. John is a Catholic school, right? If I'm not I'm correctly. So that, that's going to go together well, man. That's going to go together well. Prostitutes. It's going to go together well. Come on, man. Bring it. Come on. 
I'm serious. Here it is, man. It's amazing to me. These schools that act like they stand for something. When it's time to win or just make some money, they'll do it. they'll dig way down the cream crap barrel and pull them off. You gotta be kidding me, man. Damn. Coach Petito, if you see this show, I want to be a recruiter and go on a recruiting trip. Hire me. <laughs> Hire me. <laughs> I want to be a recruiter. This this is going to be he's he's going to turn this mother. Out. Watch, he's going to turn <laughs> Saint John's. Oh, Saint John's going to be in the tournament every year. It's going to be flash and dash. It's going to be screw the Knicks. Madison Square Garden belongs to the Saint John Red Man. So I'm 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 all for it. I knew this was going to happen. Here we go, Patino. You coached there before. You know the landscape. You know the places to go. 42nd Street. Uh, all those places to go <laughs> to get the recruits there in St. John's. I'm all for it. Let bygones be bygones at Louisville. Hello, St. John's at the Big East. There you go. Ice. Yeah, I'm sure he know all of the crevices and the secret closets in the garden. So you're right. <laughs> He knew where Willis Reed was before he came out. He did this little last walk thing in the 70s. So Rick know the whole game plan. I tried to tell you all before, when you mentioned before, I was like, you're like, well, I don't know. I was like, it's perfect for him. You're going to start seeing Willie Glass at the gate. You're going to start seeing <laughs> Willie Glass. You're going to see one way Walter Berry going to start coming back. Chris Mullen going to be up in the front. Everybody that was St. John's royalty going to be sitting up in there. They're going to be like, he going to be like, Mm -hmm. oh, what about Mark Jackson? Mark, I Mark mean, yeah, my, oh, oh, you know, Mark. Mark might get a job on it. He might be an assistant, <laughs> and then you know he's gonna be the uh, the be, be the team pastor. You already know he'll be there. <laughs> he gonna be the clergy for the team, the team chapel. Oh, I'm just trying to tell you, man. Rick, Rick got to have somebody to kind of calm that down. What's going on, Mark? Oh well, you know I'm counseling quite regularly, and you know he's staying staying away from things. And I told him, you you're fine. Everything's gonna work well in in, in New York. Just don't go back to Louisville, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, I mean you know. They know what they're doing, bro. You know, I mean, you say you want to, you can say your dog. We, he done a lot of ill mannered things, allegedly, a lot of stuff going on. But there is nothing, nothing like bringing Rick Patino back to the guard. Yeah. You know, kids going to leave. And I love Mike Anderson. Mike Anderson from around the way, you know, good old country boy from down the way. You know, he want he want us. He down home. He ain't have a shot chance in hell in New York. Cause you know New York, you know y'all East Coasters, and y'all gonna be mad at me. I'm from the Midwest. Y'all, y'all got a certain way, certain kind of swagger. Think y'all own every damn thing, and you need a man in that position. People from the Midwest down south, they ain't ready to handle that. He just gonna try to get it rolling. You need a guy with that swagger, you know, with the suits and the shark skins and all that other shit. You know, you that's what you need. And you got one. So just quit tripping. Let Rick come in there and do what he do. Everybody can be happy, and you know, uh. All the dudes coming back in from the neighborhood. You going to fucking gang? You going to fucking gang? You know what I'm saying? All that, all that stuff. They going to be back in the mix. The garden going to be back on fire. Y'all been waiting on the Knicks. The hell with that. They got what you need right now. And Rick Matillo going to show you how it's done. Shit. Uh, Patrick, you ain't might come back and, and be on the sideline as an assistant coach. Or just you know, as a, a royalty of St. John's, he went to uh, went to uh, Georgetown. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, hire me to supervise the recruitment and give me a dark pair of shades. That's all I ask. That's all I ask. I, don't, I ain't see nothing. I ain't see nothing. All right, last second shot, Black. <laughs> Look at Black just shaking his head. <laughs> this, this, this shot goes out to a Michael Irvin and the actor. I can't think of his name. He played in Creed two or three. Over the past few weeks, he was alleged to basically been of his girlfriend. We have to kill and really watch ourselves, basically, because we're allowing good men. I'm gonna say they both were good men to allow us to get caught with women in a sense to which basically demolishing our careers, bro. We work hard to do things and accomplish things. I'm gonna get more. These women are beautiful, you know, in order our minds wrong too, but we gotta put ourselves in situations where we cannot do dumbass things. It's gonna cost us. Something to think about. Ice. Yeah, I was gonna jump on a lot of topics, but I want to really focus on one individual and I want to give him love because 
we are in an age where, <clears throat> excuse me, where so many young, talented individuals, particularly athletes, have opportunity, they get caught up because they get all the money, they get a lot of stuff going on, and they get caught up in thinking they're great even before they have the actually time to shine. But one particular individual was kind of put in a bad situation. I'm talking about James Wiseman. James Wiseman was the former center of Golden State. He's like one of the top picks, and they traded him, got rid of him because they said he never really just lived up to his potential. One, he was playing with a great bunch of superstars, a, a team that was trying to keep their dynasty going, and they just didn't have a fit. So they traded him to Detroit. And he hasn't been in Detroit long, but he's playing his ass off. I love that. We saw a couple of 20 and 10 games. He's given all he got. And if and in the right situation, if they give him let him give him time, he's going to be a, a damn good center. And, and I think that I love that because he easily could have quit, kept he kept counting his money and not even give a damn about the game. But he's coming there trying to improve against a Detroit team that we know is not going anywhere no time soon, particularly this season. But I love that. James Weissman, keep doing your thing, brother. You're very talented. I want you to show the rest of the world. You, you're not just a, a big name. You're just tall, and that's why they picked you based on uh, on, on potential because we've seen a lot of those called, called bust throughout the years. Anyway, don't be like Michael Olin Candy. Anyway, I didn't say that allegedly. There's another uh, school shooting, and this is the 308th school shooting since Columbine. 308 since Columbine. And after every shooting, you have the politicians who won't do anything, say offer up prayers and thoughts. And this was a Christian school, which a lot of politicians claim to, to be Christians. And you hear the same thing, prayers and thoughts. When you can do investigations on trying to get rid of TikTok and it's hurting kids and it's hurting this country. When you're doing investigations on what's on Hunter Biden's laptop and you have policies that can protect children and people in schools and you don't do anything about it you're fucking hypocrites all of you sitting on your hands not doing anything you're fucking hypocrites 